feisty. Okay, good morning. So we're going to have to have our teach back on the, uh, the chapters on kidney, right? On the genital um, urinary tract at the same time. We're going to talk about the uh, different conditions that affects male and female reproductive organs. So first things first, let's deal with the kidney first, right? Um, as a future nurse, one of the things that you will be doing is to monitor the intake and what? Output of your patients. So when you say output, primarily what output are you referring to? Perfect. Urinary output, right? And can anybody tell me what is considered normal for a person to have in terms of the normal urinary output in one hour? How many? 100 ml. That is not what I'm looking for. Can you give it lower? 50 is still not what I'm looking for. Yes? 30 is the magic number. So wh why do we want our nurses to know that? Because it's not 100, it's not 50, it is what? 30. So can we afford to make mistakes here? No. We can't. Why? Because when you work in the hospital, you are expected to know that the magic number is? 30. 30. Anything below 30 ml per one hour is considered what? Perfect. So are we precise in our definition of terms? especially when we're dealing with quantity of urinary output. Of course, because if it's below 30, is it abnormal? Yes. It is considered what? Oliguria. Can anybody tell me what exactly therefore is oliguria? It's a decreased, decreased urine output. In other words, the amount is below what? 30. The normal, which is 30, right? In fact, oligo, is a root word which means what? Scanty. You know what an English word means, right? Decreased amount. S-E-A-N-T-Y. Scanty urine output means less than normal. Normal is 30 ml per one hour. Now what is considered normal in one day? 500. Some books would say 500, some books would say 400. If we actually multiply, if we multiply 30 by 24 hours, what would that be? <laughs> Have you ever tried 30 times 24? What would that be? 612, 20? So 500, 600. If you base it on the reason why, why, why do we use 30 per ml per hour as important? Because that is what we normally do where? In the intensive care unit. How many of you have worked in the ICU? Not yet, right? When you become a nurse and become an RN, are you going to be working in the ICU? So do we expect you to remember the magic number? Now why ICU? More money for you, believe me. <laughs> more headache, more stress. You die at a young age, but at least you die happy because you have, no, I'm just joking, of course. <laughs> who do you think gets more paid? A nurse who works just passing out meds in a nursing home or the one who works in the ICU? ICU? Who do you think will easily be fired? The one picking, giving meds in the nursing home or the ICU? ICU. Who said they laid off? Yes. Why? Because ICU nurses are the best in the West. They're there. They know a lot of things. Sometimes they even know more than the doctor who is there for the first, first few weeks. That happened to me. When I was a medical intern, nurses knew more than I do because they've been working there for 20 years. So I was very nice to those women. They think of them as my older sister. And then, okay, do you like to sleep, Dr. Agamo? Oh, sure. <laughs> One hour of sleep is gold at that time, you know, during training. Anyway, so the kidney, as we know, what is the main function of your kidney, class? What does it do? What does it filter? Okay. Now what exactly do you mean by the word filter? Get rid of what? Toxins. Waste. What kind of waste? Huh? Nitrogenous weights, right? Because they contain, what do they contain if they're nitrogenous waste? Nitrogen. Nitrogen. Isn't that amazing? Don't you love anatomy and physiology? It's just amazing. We say nitrogenous waste because it contains what? 
Now these waste, what, what are these waste products then? Can anybody tell me? Urea. Urea, that's one, what else? Uric acid. Uric acid, what else? Yeah. What else? Yeah. Perfect. So one, two, and three. Which one is number one? Creatinine. Which one is more important? Creatinine. Serum creatinine. If I were to choose, which one will I use as a determining factor for urinary function? Creatinine. Serum creatinine. Okay, BUN, second choice. You don't even use uric acid as a gauge of kidney function, right? Okay, so can anybody tell me now, if you are dealing with these waste products, where did these waste products come from in the first place? Did you ever bother to ask yourself? Now, in the process of learning, you ask yourself. I know it's important, but I need to know where did this come from for it to be considered waste? Because they're waste, they are filtered in the blood, it's removed from the blood, and they're allowed to come out and removed via what? Yeah. Urine. So every time I go to that restroom there, what I see is what? Urea, creatinine, and uric acid. Every time I go to the restroom and I see the urine flowing, and I see it's pale yellow amber color, I said, thank you kidney, you made my day. <laughs> you filtered the blood, you keep me safe, keep me healthy. I told that, don't you tell that to your kidneys? You speak to them, tell them. In behalf of humanity, I'd like to spend my deepest gratitude to my kidneys and to our kidneys, who does not stop working every day. They don't even have a weekend holiday, right? So, so we need to know more about the kidneys then. These waste products you mentioned as nitrogenous waste, why are they there? Where did they come from? Where do they come? Yes. Huh? Food that you eat, that we're getting somewhere here. Protein. Okay, what? Protein. Okay, protein. What about protein? Mm -hmm. So, what does protein have? The building blocks of proteins. And what does amino acid have in its chemical compound structure? What chemical? There you go. Isn't that amazing? One plus one is equal to two. Now, do you see now why? Why well, they're called nitrogenous waste, nitrogen waste, because they were brought about by the breakdown of what food substance that you ate, and what does protein made up of, and what are found in amino acids. Oh my gosh. Don't you like anatomy and physiology? It's, it, it's, it's amazing that, oh my God, it makes sense. Protein contains nitrogen, it made up of our building blocks called amino acids, so you break them down. These wastes also contain nitrogen called nitrogenous waste. Urea, creatinine, and uric acid. Okay? So you might be what the hell do I need to know that for, Dr. Gamo? I'll tell you why. We are men and women of science. Doctors and nurses. I'm the doctor, you're the nurse. What diet do you think I would recommend? A patient whose kidney is failing. High in protein or low in protein? Why? Why, Kelly? Why would we I prescribe a low protein diet in these patients, Kelly? Your answer is correct, but do you remember? I want you all to become smart. I want you to ask yourself how, where, when, what, and the most important question, why? So you're not just here to simply what? Memorize things that is not going to be smarter thinking and learning. Why would you give a low protein diet, Kelly? If this were a court of law, I want you to justify your answer. I am the judge. You would say, Your Honor, I have to give a patient with acute renal failure with a low protein diet. Why? Because the kidney is not able to get rid of the. In other words, the kidney is not able to filter the blood properly, okay, because it's failing. And by what happens if you give a high protein diet? That the protein will not be excreted. Okay, okay, relax, chill, chill. <laughs> did you did you listen to what you have just said? So you listen as you answer. Listen to what you said. What will, if you give a high protein diet, the protein is not going to be what? Mm -hmm. The uh, amino acids will not be broken down. Well, it will be broken down, but the waste product, the nitrogenous mm -hmm. waste will, will remain in the blood. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want something more explicit in the discussion. Anybody? Why low protein diet? What is excreted? Is it the protein or is it the waste product? There you go. Don't be confused. 
The waste product is excreted. But this waste product came from where? Yes? Well, I don't know that, but I know if you give it more protein, it's going to make the kidneys worse. So Why? Because it's too much. Okay, I, I need to have to, have to answer my own questions, unless somebody else wants to explain, okay? Okay, it's very simple. Just, just relax, chill. If I give you more protein, more protein to the body, more what? Break down. Why do I need to break down protein? Because I will utilize the protein as a source of what? Energy. Remember the Krebs cycle? Mitochondria? Remember? All the food we eat, whether it's protein, lipids or fats or carbohydrates, they will become what? Pyruvate in the Krebs cycle. Now let's not go into chemistry then. Let's just make it simple. In breaking down the protein to make it become energy for our body, you release what? This waste. So the more protein you give, the more what? Waste. You will produce. The more waste you produce. The more waste you produce, the more workload you give to who? The kidney. The kidney. Now remember, the kidney is what? Normal or failing? failing. Okay, let's give you an analogy. I'm the janitor. My name's I hi, my name is Mr. Kidney. I am working here at West Coast. I clean 10 rooms a day. What's my name? Kidney. Mr. Kidney. What is my job description? To clean and filter the room. Remove all the waste in this room. Okay. How many rooms are I assigned to do every day? Ten. Ten. Today I am failing. I have a flu. I'm sick. Right? Okay. Would it be wise for my owner or my booty? Say, okay. Mr. Kinney, the janitor, you're cleaning the rooms, 10 rooms. Today I'm going to give you 20 rooms. Is that going to be wise to give 20 rooms to clean? When I'm already sick and I'm only used to cleaning how many rooms? Okay. Can you give me 20 rooms? How dare you? I'm already failing. What is your common sense there? You're supposed to be a critical thinker. A critical thinking person would not give me 20 rooms to clean because I am what? But can I afford to take a break? No. I'll always be there, Mr. Kidneys. So instead of giving 20, am I going to give less than? Maybe less than room. That's why. What kind of diet? Do you get the analogy? I hope you get the analogy. Okay. So low protein diet. Because the more protein you give, the more what? Breakdown of protein is necessary, and therefore you produce more waste and more what? Workload on the person who's supposed to clean that blood, and his name is who? Kidney, right? Does that make sense? Will this thing come out in the nursing board exam? Yes. I'm absolutely sure. Right? Do you understand? Now, going back to this. So, how would I know that the patient is having a kidney failure? Or suffering from kidney failure? Blood, what? Blood in the urine. Will that automatically tell me that there is kidney failure? It is blood in the urine. What is blood in the urine? It's in your list, the study guide list, right? Hematuria. Okay. Will that automatically tell me that there is renal failure here? No. no. What will tell me that this patient could be suffering from renal failure? Or proteinuria. Huh? Proteinuria. What? Okay, will protein in the urine tell me right away that there is no failure here? No. So why did you shout proteinuria? What do you think will tell me that this patient could be suffering from renal failure? The lab. Huh? Okay, okay, okay. If this were a Facebook account, let's stick to the thread. You're giving me all these things that, come on, ladies and gentlemen, you have to be focused on one thing. It's not hematuria. It's not proteinuria. Do you think it's glucosuria? No. And what other the urea, urea, urea that I meant? Yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Allegory. Allegory. You're the man. I'm going to hire you now. You have your license with you now? I'm going to hire you today. Because you got me right. You! What did I start with today? Did I start with hematuria or proteinuria? What was the first thing I talked about? And what did I tell you about oliguria? The patient could be suffering from what? 
have you forgotten? That was maybe five minutes and 15 seconds ago. And we easily forget, it's okay. Because that is part of humans to forget. But not when you become future nurses. You wouldn't say, oh, the patient has hematuria, he's having renal failure. <laughs> oh, the patient has proteinuria, he's having renal failure. <laughs> maybe a nephrotic syndrome, maybe a post-acute strep glomerulonephritis, but why do you say I told you to monitor the urinary output every one hour? What was I looking for? Do you know what you're looking for? It's the kidney function that I'm referring to. If it is less than 30 ml per hour, it's called oliguria. So do you think you should call me? Let's say the urine output from seven in the morning to eight in the morning was 20 ml. At exactly eight, would you wait for another one hour? Who do you call? The kidney busters. Okay, not the ghost busters. Dr. Gamma, this is nurse. Kelly, Nurse Kelly, what can I do for you? Uh, Dr. Ogama, I just want to inform you that our patient, Mr. Smith, the urine output from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. is 20 ml. Oh, and I said, oh my gosh, the patient is oliguric, isn't he? Uh, yes, Dr. Ogama, because according to you, oliguria is defined as a urine output of less than 30 ml per one hour. And the fact that the patient is 20 ml, that is below 30, then definitely has oliguria. What test do you think will I next do? First, I'll find out. What is happening to this patient? Why is he suffering from oliguria and most likely acute renal failure? What could be the, remember the word etiology? You learned in chapter one? What is etiology? The cause. So it is incumbent that me as a professor and I become a future, I practice medicine, I need to know what is causing the renal failure. But before I do that, what diagnostic test should I perform? The racial, renal what? Function panel. Renal function panel. Can you tell me what this panel is about? The creatinine test, the creatinine level. Okay, so would I order a stat creatinine levels? Yes. So, kidney function test mm -hmm. will include what? Creatinine. creatinine. What else? BUN. BUN. Potassium. Electrolytes. Well, Will the electrolytes tell me that if there's something wrong with the kidney? No. So don't you include that, my dear, see? Yeah. Okay. I'm only referring to kidney function test. So you have to be focused. GFR, GFR. GFR very good, I like that. What does GFR mean? Perfect. Okay, what else? Have you heard of the word creatinine clearance? Yes. Mm -hmm. Creatinine what? Clearance. Will you get two specimens? 24 hour urine collection. And what's the other one? Serum what? Creatinine at the start and at the end. Okay. So essentially, serum creatinine, what's the normal levels? This usually ranges from 0 0.6 to what? 1.5 milli equivalents per liter, 1.5. What about this? 8 to 25. And then what about GFR? What's a normal GFR? Yes? What's your normal? What's normal? Did you not read the chapters on the book of GFR? What's a normal GFR, yes? 120, 90, 100, it should not be less than 60, right? Okay, so some books say 90 to 100, 20, but the bottom line, it should not be less than what? 60. So GFR stands for glomerular filtration rate. Okay, now, the idea therefore is this. A patient, you told me, Dr. Gamma, Mr. Smith has urine output of 20 ml from seven to eight, and I have to know what could be causing this, right? So I will go into discussion on that later. The question now is, what is the examination I would probably be doing first? The fastest would be what? Number one, what is number one? Creatinine. Serum creatinine. What about number two? I could also order that. There's nothing wrong, right? Number two is BUN, okay? So 20 ml urine output, patient is oliguric, 
we need to establish what is causing the oliguria now. Okay, so I tell the nurse, okay, nurse, I want a stat B when done, right? Okay, so the question now is this, what specimen are you going to send to the lab? Blood. Urine? Blood. blood? Which one? Urine or blood? blood? Okay, urine. Who says urine? Who says blood? Who says I do not know? Who says I don't really care? <laughs> Okay, some of you answered urine, that's wrong. Why? What does the B stand for in B-U-N? Blood urine. Blood, blood urine? Or well, blood urea? So in life it's simple. Just chill, just relax. The B stands for what? Now what are the chances of a nurse giving the urine specimen to the lab? Especially if they don't come from West Coast. Especially if they were not here today. Or if they were here today, but they were not paying attention. I'm not kidding. I've worked in the hospital for many years. I'm not saying that uh, most of the nurses I work with were very competent, but maybe 10% of them, they make mistakes. I tell them, I want to start being and done. In the, I used to practice for 12 years. And what do they send to the lab? Yeah. What? Yeah. What do you think happens to my blood pressure? It goes up. Of course, I could suffer a stroke <laughs> because of what? I'm so, I'm, I'm so mad. Why did you send the, <laughs> the urine specimen when the B stands for what? <laughs> uh, to be honest, I've never had that experience, but I'm just trying to, you know, thank God it never happened to me, right? So the B stands for blood. So, so what happens if it's above 25 and ono cinco? It only means one thing. The kidney is failing, why? Because the kidney was supposed to what? Filter. Remove what? Urea and creatinine in the blood. So if it starts to go up, that means it failed to what? Remove. Remove or filter the blood. It remained there, and not only there, but it became what? Higher. Now, do we really completely remove all the creatinine and urea? No, we don't. That's the reason why you still have them there, see? 0.6 to 1.5, 8 to 25 is still there. Do you understand? The bottom line, therefore, is that we don't really remove them. We keep them there. Okay, now, let's review the anatomy of the kidney, therefore. Did you watch that video? I yes. So it's partly there, but let's review what I said there, right? Which is pre-renal, intra-renal, and post-renal. How many kidneys do we have? Two. Left and right. Which one is higher? The Why higher is the left, my friend? Yes? The liver is pushing. The liver. No, no, I, I'm asking this guy here, yes? The liver is pushing down. So the liver is on the right upper quadrant, it's displacing the kidney downwards. Yeah. That's the reason why the left kidney is higher than the right. Yeah. Is that correct? Okay, very good. Now, so this is the kidney. Uh, slightly higher on the left. Now, what's the name of that blood vessel that brings blood to the kidney? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And this artery came from where? Yeah. Which one? Thoracic or abdominal? Why? Right, because where is the kidney found? In the abdominal. Oh, don't you love anatomy? What's the name of the aorta? Abdominal. Why? Because it's in the abdominal cavity, right? This is the diaphragm here. This is the abdominal aorta, right and left renal kidney. And where did the aorta come from? Thoracic, descending, arch, ascending aorta, and from what chamber of the heart? The left ventricle. So, how does the blood get out of the kidney? What, what blood vessel? Renal veins. Renal veins. And where does the renal vein go to? Which one? Superior or inferior? inferior. So don't waste my time. You say IVC, don't be the cover. I have to ask which one, see? But in fact, the answer is what? Inferior one. It pierces the diaphragm too and enters what chamber of the heart? Right. Because there is a superior vena cava here from all the veins of the head, the neck, and the upper limb. So we have to be very specific. It's called the inferior vena cava. So what do you see here? Do you see a circle here? Why do you think it's called circulate? The blood circulate. Circle. From the heart, back to the heart. Aorta, arteries, and veins. 
Uh, this is a very basic question I have to ask my students. The urea, the creatinine and uric acid, how did it reach the kidney? How did it get to the kidney? Anybody? So which blood vessel brought it to the kidney? Come on. Yes? Anyone? Did you watch my video? You did, right? So what did the video say? What did Dr. Gamo, did you watch that guy there? What did he say? What did Dr. Gamo say? And that's me actually. You didn't, you didn't listen to him? What did he say? I'm gonna kick the guy in the butt. What did he say? I'm just joking. What did I tell you in that video? Is that the video that was cut in the middle or no? Okay, anyway, does anybody remember? It's very simple. It gets back to my anatomy. Of course. In other words, the renal artery, what is the blood found there? Rich in what? Oxygen plus what? It's a waste. Why? Because it is the renal artery that brings blood to what? To the kidney. To be what? What will the kidney do with the blood that came from the renal artery? Clean. Isn't that just common sense, right? It is the blood vessel that brings it there because the purpose of the kidney is to what? To clean the blood. Like me, how can I reach victory? Uh, how can I get to this place? I need to get through what? 170 freeway and then what is that renal artery? Victory Boulevard. Do, do I need to exit Victory to get to West Coast? So let's pretend that uh, Victory Boulevard is your aorta. In order to reach the kidney, I need to go through what? Victory, right? You understand? So, <laughs> 170 freeway, victory, I reach my destination, which is, happens to be the kidney. And what does the kidney do? Remove the waste, but does it remove everything? No. no. Only portions of it, but most of it. And where does the urea and the creatinine go to? The ureter, the bladder, and then what? Urethra. Does that make sense? So please, this is, the, this is just, I, I'm not trying to beg you, but if you know your anatomy and physiology, believe me, there is nothing you can answer in this world. There is nothing. Everything will be what? Difficult or easy? Very easy. If you just know your anatomy and physiology. There is, not, there, there is no, this is not rocket science. I met, I can teach calculus, that's my favorite subject, but I can teach physics, that's my other favorite subject, but this is my love, passionate subject that I love to teach. It's not even so hard, you know? But you need to know these things. So, the urine now contains this waste, but when the blood gets out of the kidney, what is the blood vessel that brings blood away from the kidney? The renal veins from both kidneys, right? Renal veins. So by the time the blood goes to the renal vein, the amount of urea and creatine will be what? Less. Because you have removed practically most of it. But you still have some amount of urea and creatine. Do you understand? Is that clear? Okay. So if the kidney is failing, what happens to the value here? What about BUN? Creatinine. Increase above 1.5. What about BUN above 25? Will that come out in the nursing board exam? Yes. Definitely. So, uh, and this is a word of advice I always tell my nursing students who were reviewing with me for, I, I was reviewing students for maybe about eight years. I said to them, you think like a nurse? I don't know, you think like a doctor and act like a nurse. What do I mean by think like a doctor? Be like me. What did the doctor order? What did the doctor do? What did the doctor say? He said, patient is oliguric. It's 20 ml per one hour. That's what you told me. It's going to be renal failure. I ordered a stop BUN and creatinine. What specimen am I going to expect you to send? Blood. Both of them, blood. And therefore, I would ask you to what? Do why? To think like a doctor, act like a, and you will never go wrong. 
You can even be think like a smarter than the doctor. You can even be. Have you ever seen these TV shows that nurses pretend that they're more, they're smarter than doctors? I hate that, but what can I do? Well, doctor, nurses are smart. So if a doctor is stupid, <laughs> it will really come out. Especially the young one, you know, you're in your first week of training. You look so stupid there. I remember the first time you entered the intensive care unit. What are these machines for? <laughs> you know the theoretical part. I know that's a uh, cardiac monitor, but I have seen it maybe once or twice before. But now I'm gone. I'm gonna. The life of this person is in my hands. But this lady nurse, the nurse there has been there working for 20 years. Do you think he's, he knows more than me? I don't even know how to turn on the, the knobs of the machine one time. <laughs> See? So we owe it to the nurses. But again, so as time goes by, I have to know more than her. Why? Because she will be dependent on me on what to do with the patient who's dying, right? <laughs> but if the nurse knows more than the doctor, that's always welcome. But just be aware that there are doctors who are you, who hate that, especially in the operating room. Because surgeons, they think they're God. And you offend a surgeon in the operating room, some of the surgeons, well, these are the old ones, you know, they would actually throw away the surgical instrument in front of you. Shit! And they're actually referring to you. They think of you as shit, you know? Uh, these are the old ones. Now, the, the, young, the young doctors probably are not as crazy as before. And I, 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 you see the nurse cry, Ooh! And they'll be told to scrub out because there is no more hope for this patient could die when the people are not working properly. That's what it is. Now, the bottom line, therefore, is this. It's very simple. When you look at this, you need to know why. Why did I order a stop being created in? Why did I do this? Because it's simple. Now, the question now is, we need to know what is the cause. Is it pre-renal, intra-renal, or? So what do you learn from the word pre-renal? What is pre-renal? Before. Before what? Oh my God, very simple, simple English words. Pre, before, renal means kidney. So what do you think will be affected here? Perfusion. Perfusion where? Hmm? So when you say perfusion, you're referring to what? Renal huh? Renal. renal perfusion. So what affects renal perfusion? The amount of blood going where? By a what blood vessel? Okay. So what do you think therefore will affect renal perfusion? Blood loss. So hypovolemia, would that be one? Yeah. Of course. And what can lead to hypovolemia? You've learned about hypovolemic shock. Everything that leads to hypovolemic shock, OMG, such as what? Diarrhea, right? Stab wound, bleeding because of gunshot wound. Stab wound, gunshot wound, bleeding. Because what's the normal blood volume? Six liters of blood. If you lose two liters of blood, there will be less blood that can lead to hypovolemia and hypovolemic shock. What about the amount of blood going to the kidney? Also less. Now remember, the kidney is an organ that needs oxygen too. So it can die because of that. Not only that, if there's less blood going to the kidney, what will the kidney filter? Less blood, what happens? Less urine. That's why there's only chorea. Does that make sense? What else? What else? To anything that leads to hypovolemia, such as what? Fluid volume deficit disorders. And you know that already, right? Like Addison's disease, right? Diabetes mellitus, diabetes insipidus. So these things come in your mind. So you have to be able, able to remember all these. Anything that leads to fluid volume deficit, which I spoke about last week, right? Anything. So every topic is related. What else? If the renal artery is there, what could affect the flow in the renal artery? Could a blood clot affect that? Yes. Of course. Renal artery what? What do you call a stationary clot? Thrombus. Did you learn this in the previous weeks? So can we afford to forget what we learned in the past? No. That is the essence of learning. The essence of learning is retaining the information so that now, after one or two weeks, you can apply what you have learned in the past. A blood clot that is formed in the renal artery that blocks the flow of blood in the renal artery will obviously affect the flow of blood. If your blood is completely, the amount of blood going to the kidney will be what? Zero or zero? zero. zero. Will the kidney die? So what happens to the urine output? Allegoria or anuria? 
Is that worse than oliguria? Ah yes. means without urine output. Do you understand? Okay. So do, do you understand what I'm trying to say? A thrombosis. What about renal artery stenosis? What is stenosis? Narrowing that can become completely obliterated. Anything therefore that affects the renal artery. Now, what about it is interrenal? What is interrenal? Kidney itself? Would that be due to nephrotoxic drugs? You know what a nephrotoxic drug is? A nephrotoxic drug is a drug that destroys the kidney. A prime example is what we call aminoglycoside. Example would be gentamicin, garamicin, streptomycin. Gentamicin, streptomycin, garamicin, they're the same, gara and genta. What is common to all of them? They end with what? Mycin. And I remember as I reviewed nurses before, for seven to eight years, they all panic, oh my God, OMG for Dr. G. There's so many drugs, how, 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 drugs. But I said, you have to be smart. Smart learning means, does it have to memorize all the drugs? Look at the pattern. Any drug that begins or ends with my sin is most likely what? Maybe, I'm not saying all of them. Gentamicin, garamicin is an aminoglycoside. Is that a nephrotoxic drug? Yes. So a patient who is being given this drug, are we going to monitor the BUN and the creatinine levels? Yes. In fact, if there is a patient with real failure, we try to avoid this. But the problem is that this drug is good for what kind of infection? Gram positive or gram negative? I just shouted the answer, it's gram negative. <laughs> Which is more dangerous, gram negative or gram positive? The release of the endotoxins, remember? You took this with Dr. Dr. Pepper. So the idea, therefore, is that we may have to give this drug. Especially if you did a culture and sensitivity testing, and the bacteria is sensitive to gentamicin. So while giving the drug, we may have to titrate in relation to beer and creatinine. And we have to lower the dose if necessary. Now, if it really significantly affects the BN creatine, we may have to stop the drug and think of something else for gram negative. A lot of drugs are most likely what? Antibiotics are what? Broad spectrum. What does broad spectrum mean? Kills both gram negative and gram positive. And we also have to consider an anaerobic bacterial infection. Now, anyway, so what else can lead to nephrotoxic drugs? Because in, intra means inside the kidney itself. What about strep throat infection? leading to acute glomerulonephritis. Remember when you have a throat infection? What hypersensitivity pattern? Was that what type one, type two, type three or four? Type three. Type what? Three. Give me a three. You are absolutely right, just like SLE. Post-strep glomerulonephritis due to a strep throat infection leading to what? An immune complex disease affecting both your? So you have a patient, this is the history of this patient. Uh, Dr. Gamo, Dr. Gamo. A week ago, I had a sore throat. Today, my urine is red. What is a red urine? Hematuria. Hematuria. Right? Can anybody explain to me why is the urine red? Hmm? Okay. There might be an infection. Mm-hmm. What is, so a throat infection leading to hematuria. What is that? So it's a post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, right? Explain why. So we'll go back to your anatomy of what is the functional unit of the kidney? Nephron. Nephron, right? So this is your what? Artery, affer what is afferent again? Arterial, then what? Glomerulus. And what is a glomerulus again? What is a glomerulus, by the way? Yes? Kelly? Very good. Capillaries. What's, what's a capillary, by the way? Smallest blood vessels. So what is inside the blood vessel? And that is why it's called the filter of blood, because it filters the blood, right? So the glomerulus is what? 
a network of what? So what brings blood to the capillaries? Afferent. What brings blood away? Efferent. Arterial. Then you have here what? Very what? And then after that series of veins, then what? Renal veins and what? IVC. What about here? The renal what? Are these series of smaller arteries, interlobular, interlobular? And then this came from where? Aorta. And this came from where? Left ventricle of the heart. The idea here is that it's always going back to anatomy and physiology. What is the filter here? Bowman's capsule, another filter. Then what is PCT? Then this is the loop of? And then what is DCT? And then what is CD? Collecting duct, not compact disc. How many nephrons do we have in our kidneys? One million. So if you have one million on the right, one million on the left, how many would that be? Two million. That means you and I are multi-millionaires. Thank God we're so rich. Rich in nephrons. Right? Do you understand? So, for those of you who are under me in anatomy, what did I compare the glomerulus to? Miss Karen, you were in my class, remember? Okay, just because you were in the lab doesn't mean I did not discuss it in the lab. Anybody? What's your name? You were in my class, right? You were not in, who was in my class? Aside from these two people I remember. You were in my class, no? Yes. Well, how did I compare the glomerulus to? Can somebody give me a piece of paper, please? I don't want to get out of the frame of mine. And, okay, thank you. This is similar to a coffee filter. A filter, but I, I, did, I use a different analogy. In the kitchen, what does your mother have? Trainer. Rosette trainer. Were you in my class? No. How come you know? Because I watch your videos. <laughs> oh, you did? I mentioned the word trainer? I believe so. Or oh my gosh, see what happens if you watch the video and listen to it? <laughs> the video? How many likes? Did you, did you watch the YouTube video or the, I also have a YouTube video, but I don't think there's a kidney video there. But the one I see, okay. What does a strainer have? Oh. What kind of holes? Very big or very small? Oh. Okay. Very small. Okay. So, if I fold this into, convert this into a glomerular blood vessel, what is found in the wall of the glomerulus? Oh. Holes. Those are pores. We don't call them holes. We call them pores, P-O-R-E-S, okay? Now, let's go back to the strainer. I don't know why you forgot this. I said, this is the strainer. This is the empty glass. Do you see the empty glass there? Pretend there is one. It's empty, there's nothing inside. This is the strainer. I get an orange fruit. What do I do with the orange fruit? Squeeze. So that means there is what? Hydrostatic pressure. Blood pressure, pressure, the, the orange fruit, what comes out here into the empty glass? That's the urine. What remains on top? The what? What remains on top of the orange fruit? Huh? Or, or talk about orange fruit first. The, the, the pulp, okay. <laughs> what about the seed? Did not go through. What about the pulp? Did not go through. Why? 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 It's big. What about the holes? Oh. The pulp and seed is? Big. And the holes are? Oh. Now that pulp or seed is like a red blood cell. That pulp or seed is like red blood cell. What about proteins? Albumin and globulin. Can they go through? No. What about the urine or water? Yeah. Yes. What about the urea and the creatinine? Yes. yes, because they were what? Small enough to go through. So now, let's convert this into a glomerular capillary. If you review the anatomy and physiology of the kidney, which one is wider? Afferent or afferent? Afferent. Okay. <laughs> afferent, glomerular capillary, efferent. Which is smaller? Which is wider? 
So when the blood flows here, when you vasoconstrict, what happens to the blood pressure inside? It goes up. Remember the garden hose analogy I made? When the water pressure is low, you make the, the holes in the garden hose smaller, the pressure what? The same thing here. When this is wider, narrower, afferent, efferent, glomerular capillaries wider, blood pressure is high, the hydrostatic blood pressure is high, what does that pressure do? Squeeze, squeeze what? The blood against the wall. You squeeze the blood against the wall, what will come out here would be what? Urea, creatinine, uric acid, and then what? The filtrate, which is the initial urine. Who will else filter the blood? This will also filter because you will learn about the podocytes and the slits there. Do you understand? But the main filter would really be the glomerular, that's why it's called glomerular filtration rate. How many ml of blood is filtered per minute, right? Do you understand? ml per minute per 1.73 <coughs> m to the squared power. Does that make sense? Okay, so. The bottom line, therefore, is the GFR is low, that means there's something wrong with the kidney, it's failing. Do you understand? Okay. So, in patients with post-acute glomerular nephritis, what is inflamed? Post-acute post streptococcal glomerulo nephritis, what is inflamed? The glomerulus. So, what do you think will happen to the holes when the glomerulus are inflamed? What do you think happened to the whole host? Did it become smaller or bigger? And if the holes are bigger, what does happen to the red blood cell? They go through. If the kidneys glomerulus were normal, the red blood cell should have what? Albumin, because they are not what? They are not waste. So I'm doing I'm just trying to stress a point. I'm not angry with you or what. <laughs> but in this situation, it's an abnormal condition. When you have post-streptococcal acute glomerular nephritis, the glomerulus is inflamed, the holes become bigger, is it therefore possible for the red blood cell to go through? Yes. And that's the reason why the patient said, Dr. Gamo, I have hematuria. No, he won't say that. I have red. <laughs> My urine, Dr. Gamo, has become pink or yellow, red. And that is hematuria. You understand? But the bottom line is this, you have to ask, what happened to you, sir? Oh, I remember one or two weeks ago, I had a sore throat. <coughs> Strep, bacteria, infection, immune complex disease, type three hypersensitivity, bang! Caused the inflammation of the glomerular, bang! The hole became bigger, bang! Red blood cell goes through, bang! Red urine, otherwise known as hematuria. Yes, ma'am? Well, what blood in what blood in the urine? Urine, protein urine? I thought that was related to like a urinary tract infection or a kidney infection. Okay, we pro hematuria is not just found in what in strep glomerulitis. What about kidney stones? Yeah. Yes, you have. Okay. Now remember, whenever there is a stone in the kidney, that alters the normal anatomy of the kidney. Okay, that's why you can have hematuria. Uh, what about? Um, so it's not just found because there are a lot of other conditions. So whenever I see blood in the urine, that's really abnormal. I have to find out why. So as a doctor, we are like, uh, uh, what's the show on television now? It's a very smart British uh, Sherlock, Holmes. Sherlock Holmes, right? We're going to be the Sherlock Holmes of the body, you know? Or in, I remember Dr. House before in the, the show House. So we need to know why. Because there are a lot of things, so th as a doctor, we have what we call differential diagnosis, hematuria. Bang, bang, what are the possible causes? A smart doctor finds out what could be causing this. Is it glomerulitis? Is it the kidney stone? So will I order a ultrasound of the kidney or a CT scan or MRI scan? Yes, I do, because I need to be smarter than anybody else in order to save this patient's life so that I know what to do with him to save his life, right? Okay, now going back to this, therefore. Aside from this, so anything that damages the kidney inside the kidney is what? Now what is post-renal? Of course. Renal means kidney, post means, what is after the kidney? What structure is that? Ureter. Ureter, definitely. Then what? Bladder and then urethra. So what do you think will block the flow of urine? Stone. A stone! Stone! 
What else? An enlarged prostate gland. BPH, you know, benign prostatic hypertrophy. Right? Do you understand? Any congenital anomaly of the urethra, bladder, and here that process what? Reflux. <coughs> what is reflux? Backflow. Because if it's completely black, what if you have a stone here? Would the urine be able to flow? No. Can that cause kidney damage and kidney failure? That's post renal. What would be the effect if the urine cannot flow here? The urine is mostly water. What happens to the kidney? What do you call that condition whereby there is enlargement of the kidney as a result of ureteral obstruction because of the presence of a ureteral stone? Yes, my dear. You were thinking, I can tell. Your, your eyes and your mind is... You're rolling your eyeballs. I don't think you have a seizure. <laughs> she was really... So I thought you were thinking. So what's your answer? Okay, yes, ma'am. Is it cystitis or... Well, what? Cystitis is bladder infection, bladder, urinary bladder infection. Urinary, that's cystitis. Okay. Yes? Hydronephritis? Almost, but not quite. Okay. Not hydronephritis, it's something else. Hydro what? Hydronephrosis. What does hydro mean? Water. Is the water mostly found in the urine? Is that the reason why? Because it backflows. There's a, a black hair causing the kidney to become enlarged. And how do I know? Can you compare that with the right kidney? Yes. That's what we do. A doctor. We're the Sherlock Holmes of medicine. You have to be very smart. You have to be one step ahead of anyone. You have to be, be very, very much focused. We cannot afford to be distracted. You understand? <laughs> Okay. Hydronephrosis, okay? Now, so do you see the difference here? Pre-renal, intra-renal, post-renal? Now, I forgot to mention this. Uh, what is the significance of a creatinine clearance? What does clear mean? To clear means to get rid of the waste. Which one? Creatinine, right? So basically what happens here is this, very simple. Here we get two specimens. Basically, this will come out in the nursing board exam. Blood and urine specimen. So if I tell the nurse, nurse, I want to do a 24-hour urine collection because we're going to calculate for creatinine clearance. So I say, nurse, start collecting by 6 in the morning of Monday up to 6 a.m. of Tuesday. That will be exactly 24 hours. So we're going to insert what? An indwelling catheter or Foley catheter, which is the yellow one or red one sometimes, that has a balloon. And to keep it in place, you put what, 30 cc of air or water, and then it goes inside the bladder, the balloon is inflated, inside the bladder you can no longer what? Pull it out. And then you have a Euro bag. Okay, so catheter with Euro bag. So if I tell the nurse, I want you to collect the specimen of urine from 6 a.m. of Monday to 6 a.m. of Tuesday. Okay, this is what's going to happen in the nursing board exam. They will ask you a case scenario. At six in the morning, you went to see the patient, you found out that the bag contains 20 ml of urine. What will you do with that urine at 6 a.m. of Monday? Keep that to be measured as part of your 24 hour urine collection or discard? And why? Discard. Why do you discard it? The answer is correct. Hmm? You remember but you don't know why? That's not good. You have to know why. Yes? Miss, uh, who else does I discard? So what was the order of the doctor? Dr. Gamo ordered me to do what? The urine collection from what time to what time? 6 a.m. Okay, it's now 6 a.m. You were there, you saw a Euro bag that is, has 20 ml of urine. What does it tell you? Where did that 20 ml come from? Before. Of course! So please, now I, I, I may have to apologize because sometimes when I say this thing, people look at my facial expression and they think that I think it's probably one of the reasons when after nine weeks they make this comment, they make me look dumb or stupid. I said, it's just my expression. Of course, it's just common sense. Isn't that relax, chill? You have to have a very simple mind. The order was from 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. the following day, which means anything below what? 
before that was, if it's there by 6, it has, it was accumulated or formed before the 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. You were told to start at 6 a.m. from zero. So get that, discard it. So let's say at 9, you get specimen, you collect that. At 12 noon, get it. Now let's say now, this time, the opposite. The Tuesday morning, at 6 in the morning, you got to see 60 ml of urine. What do you do with that 6 a.m. Tuesday morning specimen? Hmm? You keep it. You part, that's part of the urine collection. Because that was for before 6 a.m. of Tuesday. I think that is part of the 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. the following day. Does that make sense? You might think it's so simple, but when you are taking a nursing exam and you are in a state of stress and panic, you don't think carefully. You understand? I want you all to pass the nursing board exam. You understand? Now, when we do this, we get two specimens of blood for serum creatinine. Monday morning at 6 and Tuesday morning at 6. And there is a formula for this. I don't have, I don't have the formula right now. It's also a way of testing for what? Creatinine clearance. Now, there is a page in the book. What page was that? Where you have the, and I told you to research on this, the stages of ATN or acute tubular necrosis. Why will there be acute tubular necrosis? Necrosis of the tubules. When there is what? Kidney failure. When you damage the kidney, what happens to the tubules? Become necrotic. What does necrotic mean? They're dead. So what are the phases there? The first one was what? Stages of ATN or basically acute renal failure. Stage of what? Prodromal or second one? And what's the third one? Third one is what? Post-oligure. Now in some book, what's another word for post oligure Some would say diuretic phase. So what page is this? Can anybody tell me what page is in the book? Yes? What page? 500. 99. 599. Is there the table there? Mm, no. It's just, it talks about the pedonal Yeah, yeah, but there is a tape, like a diagram. Go to the previous page, my dear. No, no, previous page with the left page. There you go. There's a table there. Now, the next previous page. There, there, what color? Yellow, green, and red on the left hand. There you go, perfect. I can see, even though I'm nearsighted, but... Can you tell them what is found under the prodromal phase? Uh, what page is that, my dear? 596. 596, okay, tell me. Tell them, what is prodromal? What do you find in prodromal phase? Uh, injury has occurred. Injury of the kidneys occurred, then? Normal or low, urine alpha. Normal or low, and then? And increased B and so what is the meaning of the word increase B? What's another word for increase B U N and creatinine? Uh, increase waste. What is another word for increase B U N creatinine? I told you to def there were words I told you to define, right? Like hematuria, proteinuria, glucosuria. Now, does anybody have a copy of this study guide? If you get to answer the study guide and retain it there, you get a perfect score for this today's quiz. Did I give you a study guide? Yeah. Did you do the study guide or you just printed it out without doing it? Let me see. Um, can I give Barry a study guide? Is that yours? So you try to answer it. I can see because you have read answers. I'm not sure if I put it I, there. I don't know if you'll understand it though. I cannot. I can tell right away. <laughs> oh, it's not here. It's okay. But you have here pyuria, proteinuria, nephralgia, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay, what's the word? High urea and creatinine in the blood, yes? Is it azure, azure urea? Something urea. Like that? Yes. Where, where is the creatinine and urine, uh, urea high? Urine or blood? So why is it azure, azure urea? The first three letters are correct. Yes, uh, Ventura? Uremia. Well, before uremia. What did you say? Huh? Azo, did you not hear the word azotemia? Is it there? Okay, look at the uh, oligoric face. Uh, shh, shh, listen, listen to what she's gonna say. Oliguria and, or anuria. Okay, oliguria and? Anuria. Anuria, what else? Next, next. Falling uh, over the hyperkalemia, azotemia, urine. There you go, it's there! Oh my gosh! 
It's a Mesopotamia. Is there oliguria in this oliguric phase? Yeah. Is there azotemia in this oliguric phase? Is it hyperkalemia? So what kind of problem do we have in oliguric phase? Fluid volume overload or fluid volume deficit? Deficit or overload? Overload. Please. We don't just simply memorize things. We have to understand. All I can do is cry. Why do you think there is less urine output in oliguria? Because where is the water being retained? In the body. So when you are oliguric, most of the blood is not being filtered, and the water remains. You have a fluid volume overload. Is that the reason why your blood pressure will be expected to be high or low? High. What about in the diuretic phase or the post-oliguric phase? More urine is coming out. What happens to that? Fluid volume deficit or fluid volume overload? Yes. Did we learn this before? We, we had a lecture on this already. Do you understand? So aside from monitoring urinary output, are we going to monitor the weight of the patient? Let's say today the patient's weight is 100 pounds. Tomorrow it became 150 pounds. Why? Because it's retaining what? Water and blood in the oligoric phase. Will I be alarmed? Yeah, yeah. And you will notice what happened to the patient's presentation in periorbital edema, ascites, bipedal edema. Now what is the term used when you have generalized edema? Everything is swollen because you're retaining a lot of water. Yes? OMG, where did you get that? How did you know that word, Anasarka? From two weeks ago. Very good, of course. So you always remember what you have learned in the past. What is that? Anasarka. Have you ever seen a patient with kidney disease? Have you ever been to Davita Dialysis Center? Swollen, edema? Swollen, because why? That's the retaining water because the kidney has failed to maintain your fluid balance. Do you understand, class? Okay. Now, chronic kidney disease, can you tell us what page is that? Chronic kidney, CKD, what, uh, the next on the right. There are ways, different ways to staging of CKD. One would be based on nephron loss. Left upper side. Uh, is that the one? Nephron loss? Or oh, the next page? There you go. So can you tell us how many percent, 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 percent? If how many percent loss? Okay, so there, is, there are like stages there, like, like 70 to 90, more than 90 is uremia, and state renal disease. That's a very important chart table. Okay, what page is that, my dear? 602. 6-0? Very good. Now, aside from chronic kidney, this is based on the nephron loss, what's the other way? Based on what? Now, look to the right side. Or maybe the next page, I'm not sure. Perfect, so, so on the left side you have the nephron loss and the third one is on what? Creatinine or if not GFR, right? So the idea therefore is that we utilize this as a means to stage. When the patient develops uremia or end stage renal disease, it's no longer reversible. Nothing we can do. The only thing we can do is either what? Life Lifetime dialysis or what? Transplant. Kidney transplant. The dialysis machine is like an artificial kidney. The blood goes to the, the machine, the machine will clean the blood, and the blood goes back to you clean. Less urea, less creatinine. Do you understand? Is that clear? Okay. So the idea, therefore, is that anything that affects the kidney, what about if you have an ascending infection? What do you call the infection of the kidney? What? Pyelonephritis. Okay, what's the most common organism leading to kidney infection? E. coli. I can tell this woman is ready. What is it? What is it? How did you know about that? I had the infection. Ah, okay, from experience, okay. E. coli experience. Uh, did you have E. coli? Was it the one that was seen in your specimen? Uh, no, I had a lot of patients with it. 
Mm. So E. coli, that's the most, is that in the book? Yes, it is, okay? So the bottom line is that ascending infection or any form of infection, like STD, can go up here. You understand? Or a cystitis, urethritis, cystitis, right? Do you understand? Now, the, the other idea here is that when we're dealing with these kinds of conditions, we have to be aware of the importance of knowing the anatomy and physiology, right? Now, um, so we talked about the kidney. The other urinary tract infections, infection and kidney stones. What are the different types of kidney stones that they were dealing with? Stones in the kidney is called what? Nephro what? Lithiasis, because lithiasis means stone. What about if it's in the ureter? Ureterolithiasis. What about if it's in the bladder? Cystolithiasis, because cysto means bladder. Cystitis means bladder infection. There's nothing hard here. It's just a game of words, right? Okay, so there are many types of stones. What's the most common stone in the kidney? Calcium oxalate. Calcium oxalate. What about if the stone is seen in a patient with gout? Because in gout patients, you have hyperuricemia, and that would be uric acid stones. What about a patient who suffers from chronic kidney and urinary tract infection? Who says truvite? You're the man, and you're the woman. Huh? So th these are some of the more common stones. Me, five years ago, I had this stone. Severe pain on my left flank. What is this place called? Lumbar. What else is another name for this? Left lumbar pain or right lumbar pain? What else? Flank. F L A N K. What else? The quadrants usually are here in the front, not here. So we don't use quadrants in the front, or only in the front but not in the back, yes? Why, why would the pain be here at the back? Where, where is the kidney found? It's retroperitoneal. See how important anatomy really is? Now, in the purpose of the nursing board exam, you would say, don't you, are you not happy with just saying left lumbar pain, Dr. Gamma? No, I'm not. I want you to be very smart. In the nursing board exam, they may not mention the word left lumbar pain. They will use what word? They can use the word left flank pain or right flank. Flank means this part. F-L-A-N-K. Or they may use the word lumbar because that's a lumbar spine, that's back pain. Okay, what else? It's in the book. In one of the terms, I mentioned the word nephralgia. Nephro, kidney, alja means pain. If you really have read the chapter, this is the reason why sometimes I try to avoid giving study guides. Because some people don't bother to read the entire book, they just read, but okay, define, define, and they don't even know. What is another term for left flank pain or I never, never give any study guide, but now I have to, to focus you on what you need to know, right? It's yes? Renal colic. Hmm? renal colic is one. We can use the word colic. Colic means colicky pain, yes. Renal colic. Flank. Oh, yeah. So you have to be aware of this terminology because in the exam that you're taking, which is called the NCLEX exam, they might mention the patient confer, confer, uh, con <coughs> <coughs> might complain of what? Left costal vertebral angle pain, CVA. What does that mean? Costal means rib. What does vertebral mean? Spine. Angle. The angle formed between the ribs and this lumbar spine is called costal vertebral angle pain. What's the term used? Angle pain. So, nephralgia, pain due to a kidney disorder, most likely kidney stone. Alja means pain, analgesic. Alja, nephro, nephralgia. Now, where did you encounter the word SCVA? How did you know it's cerebral, uh, how did you know it's a cause of, where did you read that word? I'm so excited. That's how you learn. You learn by reading. 
You don't just depend on my study guide and me. Don't you get excited if you read something new? Oh my God, this is something new. I have goosebumps. I'm so excited. I learned a lot today by reading these two chapters today. Don't you get that feeling? Some people, oh my God, so much work. I hate the blended. I hate this. I... Instead of wasting your time complaining, what should you do? Just read and study. Do you understand how wasteful that would be? Just... Especially when you get to have blended in nursing core. Then do they start blended there already or not yet? They're about to. So now you know what to do. You're the expert. Because when you read, is it possible for you to know more than the nurses? Believe me, you'll be no, you will more, be more knowledgeable than anybody else. Like me, although I don't have to read a lot of these things because I know them because I'm a doctor, but still, I still have to read because there might be things that are new that I don't know. You, you understand what I'm saying? But do you, do you notice why I was mentioning about flank pain, coastal vertical angle pain, I was mentioning about lumbar pain, because in the nursing board exam, what if they do not use the word flank pain and the, they, they would say in the case scenario, because that is what is going to be in the nursing exam, the patient complained of left costal vertebral angle pain. And you ask, what the hell is this? You already wasted a few seconds because you don't even know what costal vertebral angle pain means. It simply means that it's what? Here. Left flank pain is the same thing as left costal vertebral angle pain. Well, you might think it's in the neck pain. No, it's not. The cervical pain. You understand what I'm saying, okay? Is that clear? Now, so what caused this pain stone to develop? So what should we recommend the patient to do? Drink what? Water. Like me, I did not drink water for 20 years. I only drink cocaine, Coke. <laughs> Okay. Coke with sugar cane. Remember, not Pepsi Cola, but Coca Cola. Guess what? Five years ago, I developed kidney stones, and I cannot forget that day. It was so painful. I was driving on the freeway, so I called my wife, honey. I am so I have so much pain. I have to get out of the freeway on 105, exited at Lakewood, and I told my wife, "Pick me up here, please. I can't drive anymore. There's so much pain." And my wife said, "No, you just take the side street." <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's my commander in chief. I said, "Yes, dear." See. When I got out of the car and I was going like this, I had scoliosis. Oh my God, is it really that painful? Why did I call you? <laughs> okay, so to make me feel happy, she brought me to the hospital in uh, Nahai Memorial Medical. They did a CT scan, and there it was. When the stone was in the kidney, it was hematuria. But when the stone started to go down into the ureter, what did the stone do to the ureter? Wow. Stretch. It was so much pain. I think I was in labor pain. <laughs> so they gave me medications, told me to come back to see the urologist, the surgeon for urology. And he found, the surgeologist spoke with and said, oh, oh you're, you're a medical doctor. You, I used to practice and he said, oh, Dr. Gamma, what do you want? We can either do surgery, insert a scope into your urethra, and then pull this stone from here. Shh. Oh my God, my virgin urethra. <laughs> 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 or, <laughs> she, he told me, the other option is by natural birth of your baby stone. <laughs> and you need to drink 20 glasses of water every day. I said, sir, I prefer natural birth. <laughs> so EDC is what we call for women going to deliver the baby called EDC, expected date of confinement. There's a measurement for nine months of calculation. So my EDC was one week later. It was a sad day. I was by myself in my labor room. What was my labor room? My bathroom. <laughs> so I was in front of the delivery room, which happens to be the toilet bowl. It was sparking clean. I was doing this la masse by myself. Nobody was holding my hand to, to appease me. I was <laughs> Finally, I could see the baby crowning. The baby stone was like this. It was like this. Dad, I'm excited to meet you, Dad. <laughs> My name is Calcium, my last name is Oxalate Gamo. <laughs> and my baby stone came out, bang! What did I do with the baby stone? I got the baby stone, there was no pulse. There was no respiration. I performed CPR. Baby stone was dead. I cried. So what I did was, I brought my baby stone to what? 
Kaiser and they said, Dr. Gamo, you are right, your baby stone is calcium oxalate gamo. You can keep your baby stone, you can put them in a coffin or in the backyard and bury that together with your pet puppy. <laughs> it was so painful. Never again should I drink water. <laughs> That's been five years, do I still drink water? No. <laughs> Could that have been avoided by drinking water? Yes. So is hydration important? Yes. It is, but I don't follow my advice because I'm crazy. I'm addicted to cocaine. So remind me, every time you see me with a bottle of Dr. Gamo, you remember your kidney stone. Remember the Alamo, you remember the kidney stone. Oops, okay. You understand, now, so, I have no more time to discuss this, but in, in your NCLEX textbooks, yeah. they even have a way what kind of food to eat for every type of zone you have, okay? And that is part of nursing management or nursing treatment, okay? Now, with regards to uh, male and female problems in terms of the lower urinary tract, with everything below the kidney, what do you call the condition whereby the, the urethral meatus in a penis is on top or dorsal? Okay, epi is painted. What about if it's below? So, so if it's epi above, so every time the guy would urinate, it would be like, shh. <laughs> well, you're, it's true. <laughs> what about if it's hypospadia? Instead of like this, shh. And what is phimosis? Huh? Yes, Brian? What is phimosis? Is that in the study guide? Foreskin. Yes? Inability to retract foreskin. So the foreskin, if you're not circumcised, let's pretend I am not circumcised. It's that thing, right? You normally can retract the foreskin like this. The penile glass penis, like a German helmet, you know? <laughs> it's like a helmet, you know? It's like here, see? Helmet? So you retract the foreskin like this, you can. In this patient, you cannot. So it remains, there's a small opening there. So it will affect the flow of urine. Part of hemosis, you can retract, but stop there, okay? So do you understand what I'm trying to say, okay? Now, what is the condition called when there is failure of the testes to descend? Cryptorchid. Cryptorchid. Is, is that the study guide too? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so what happens there? Normally, in a 27-month-old baby, boy, the, the testes was supposed to descend. Why? Why was it supposed to descend into the scrotal sac? Temperature. Temperature. It's warm here. Here, it's cooler. The sperm is very sensitive to temperature changes. So one day, I had a chance to speak with the sperm. I did an interview on CNN. <laughs> and, and the sperm was here. So I, I spoke with them. I said, why are you trying to move down into the scrotal sac? And this is what the sperm told me. Dr. Gamo, it's so simple. It's basic <laughs> temperature change. Here, if we remain in this abdominal pelvic cavity, guess what? We'll be burned to death. Death. Ah! And then they even show up. Ah, it's so hot here. So they go down because it's much cooler there, right? Just go down, it's cooler. So what happens if they fail to descend? It's called what? Cryptorchidism. Now, what are the complications if you have cryptorchidism? What could happen to this young boy? They become, they develop infertility because all the sperm are dead. You will never become a grandmother if you have a baby boy. Second, what else? Cancer of the testes, testicular cancer can develop. So what's the moral lesson here? So when you happen to have a baby boy and you just delivered the baby boy, what should you do? Grab the balls of your baby. This is really true. You think I'm laughing? I'm not, I'm serious. So you just delivered your baby boy, remember? You're perspiring because <laughs> baby came out. Within the first hour, what should you do? Go to your baby. Nurse, I'm weak, but I need to do this. This is what Dr. Gamo told me to do. So you need to go where? To your baby boy, and then what? Coochie, coochie, coochie! <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Why do you want to grab the balls? We want to be sure that the testis has descended. Now, this is really true, based on my medical experience. You might look at the scrotal sac as bulging, 
But that could actually just be filled with what? Fluid. I'm not kidding. So when you go like this, if it's soft, it's liquid. But if you go like this, hard, uh-huh. Thank God I'm going to be a grandmother. <laughs> Unless something happens throughout his lifetime, he changes. So you need to be able to what? Check for what? And check for what? Do you understand? Okay? Is that clear? Why? Because what would kill your baby boy would be what? Cancer of the testes and what else? They would also develop infertility. Is that clear? Okay? Now, what about women? Let's have reproductive organs in women. Okay, this is what? The uterus, this is what? Fallopian tube, <laughs> the fibrae, the ovaries are here, right? Okay. And when the egg is released, what will the fibrae do? And the egg will be waiting here for the sperm. And the egg is wearing a bikini. Honey, I'm waiting for you. Of course, the sperm will travel and fertilize the egg the woman gets pregnant, okay? Now, what happens if the woman does not get pregnant? What happens? There will be what? Menstruation. Why would there be menstruation in these women? There will be shedding off of the endometrial wall. Why? There's a drop in what levels of hormone? Progesterone, remember? If you got pregnant, the progesterone levels are high before you get pregnant because it's supposed to make the wall thick for the implantation of the fertilized egg. A thick wall like this, with so much blood vessels. But when you do not get pregnant, the progesterone level, progesterone level starts to decline. There is no more hormonal support. What happens to that wall? It dies. They develop necrosis. In other words, when a woman has ventral bleeding, it is not just blood that is coming out, but also what? Part of the endometrial tissue. I don't know. I have never experienced any menstrual bleeding, but that's what they told me. That's what I know. How long will it last? Seven days. Five days, seven days. I don't know really. Regular menstrual flow. Now, what happens when you have absence of menstrual flow? Amenorrhea. What about there's pain during menstrual flow? Dysmenorrhea. What about if you have heavy flow of urine during a regular menstrual cycle? Menorrhagia. What about if you have bleeding in between the cycles? Metro rail. <laughs> metro rager. Remember metro rail transit? <laughs> Empty. Metro rager. You understand, right? So again, these are all things that are seen in our patients who, are, who happen to be women. Uh, I don't have the time to discuss. I, I don't have, I didn't do that, but ovarian cancer, cervical cancer, what's a virus associated with cervical cancer? HPV. HPV, human papilloma virus. We do the pop smears, that's important. We now give vaccines to boys and girls, right? You don't understand? Uh, now, again, as I said, it's important to know these conditions in, in men and women. Um, in men, it's, there's mention about the BPAs and prostate cancer. You can just read on them. Uh, and they are indeed, indeed very important, right? So is there anything that you want me to discuss in the study? I talked about kidney. Uh, lower urinary tract, epispages, and all those things. We talked about male and female, uh, the different types of menstrual bleeding, right? Um, and if you want to clarify? The uterine prolapse stages? Uh, oh, the uterine prolapse is simply what? The muscles are weak. What exercise do we recommend that they do? Okay, when you say uterine prolapse, it simply means that the uterus came out like a basketball, you know? And the uterus? The entire uterus comes out here and it's going to bog there, and the only way to treat that is by doing surgery. You don't have to know the stages. All you need to know what exactly happens there. Now, what about stress incontinence among women? When the weak muscles are weak. Remember the pelvic floor muscles? Okay. If you remember, how many openings do women have? Three. You have what? The urethra, the vagina, and the anus. What about men? Only two. Urethra and anus. Life is not fair. <laughs> it's true. Isn't that true? Women have three. I only have two. It's not fair. No, I'm just not kidding. Because you are the reason why I'm here. I came out from my... No, I'm sorry. I was not by vaginal <laughs> delivery by C-section. So, How many of you were by C-section? You should form a club, okay? I will, I will be your president. 
I don't even know why. I should have asked my mom before she died. Mom, why is it that they had to perform C-section on me? Because I saw my body, I was, when I came out, I was so thin. Like, I could have come out here, right? Maybe, I don't know. And I felt bad because I said, how many of you remember the time you were born? <laughs> you don't? Really? I do. <laughs> <laughs> this is meant to be a joke. I remember that day. <laughs> October 20, 1960. 10, 20, 60. This is really true. In my birth certificate, it says 10, 20 a.m. And I used to do this. Remember my joke? I go like this. And then the vagina is here, and I go like this. Push, push, push. The baby is here. The cephalic presentation goes in. <laughs> now, I did that in front of my, my aunt. She graduated in the 50s in medical school in the Philippines, came here in the 60s to practice medicine here, right? So the first time I arrived here in 2002, so I said, aunt, and she's the one who supported the medical school. I said, you know what, I've been, I've been having this class of vocational nursing students, and I keep on telling them that hey, I, was, I was born like this. And then my aunt said, no, I was the one who delivered you, and I performed C-section on your mom. I said, really? <laughs> oh my God, and I look at the birds, oh, you're right. Your name is there, Chofila Sarabia Gamo, MD. So she performed C-section with my mom. So I was wrong. I, was, I kept on I was born like this. I, th I thank God. I never experienced so much pain, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I remember that aunt. No, I, I'm just joking, of course. On well, the day, 10.20 a.m. This is really true. 10.20 a.m., 10.20 in the morning of October 2060, 10.20.60, right? I was there. I was sleeping in my fetal position with my physiologic kyphosis like this. And then, oh my God, I could see this scalpel blade. Oh shit, I said to myself. I saw the hand of my aunt with gloves, sterile gloves going like this, pulling my foot upward. Oh no, help! <laughs> I don't want to get out there, why? I had free board and lodging. For nine months, I did not have to pay rent. I had my own swimming pool of amniotic fluid. I was doing my free stroke and box stroke and my butterfly stroke there. Did you not experience that? I was kicking my mom. Mom, okay, enough is enough, you know? I'm just okay, of course. Can you imagine if we could just go back that time and then relieve memories of our fetal life? I'm just amazed. So one of these days, I'm going to create an experiment. I will put an EEG machine into these babies inside the fetus inside. I'm just joking, me and my crazy ideas, right? <laughs> that convert those e wave, ECG, uh, EEG waves into, oh my God, can you imagine if convert that into pictures? And I can really read your mind <laughs> as a fetus, okay. Anyway, you have any questions? So I'll give you a five minute break, come back, we'll have the quiz.